All right, I'm going to be talking about the first time I ever cold approached. And this was when I was 17. 17, I think I was 17 or just about to turn 17. And it was a girl that I thought was cute, basically. Now, cold approaching is one of those things that if you've never done it before, it's very intimidating. Like, it's very, it's very scary to start if you've never done it before. Because this is kind of like territory that you've never been in before. You don't know what it's like to go up to a stranger and just hit up a conversation. For a lot of people, they've never done that, you know? I would argue the majority of people have not done that unless they've been required to. Like, unless you're trying to figure out how to go somewhere and you need directions, then you've gone and done it, but not out of your own accord. I'll tell you the story. <coughs> so, I was coming back from the park, just did some calisthenics, right? And I had some weight on me, I was holding these kettlebells, right? Because I was doing weighted pull-ups in the park. And as I was walking back, I saw this girl. And I saw her, and I wanted to approach. I thought about it, but I basically pussied out. I didn't do it. Right? I, didn't, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't approach her. I ended up going home. And I said to myself on the way back, that the next time I see her, I'm going to go approach her. And I was kind of hoping that I'd never see her again, so I never have to do it. That's what I was really hoping for at the end of the day. But what ended up happening was about a week later, coming back from the, from the park after a workout, and I see her there again. And now I'm just like, fuck, what do I, what do I do? Do I, I can't, I can't, you know, not keep up my promise to myself. You've got to keep these promises to yourself. So I was like, all right, well, I have no choice. I've got to do it. Otherwise, I'm going to kick myself afterwards. And you'll kick yourself as well. So I saw her across the road. There was a lot of traffic, right? There was so much traffic, right? The street was basically packed. So all these cars are waiting, right? And all the people in there are looking at me as I'm crossing the street with these dumbbells, with these kettlebells, bro, right? So I cross the street. And she's got headphones on. She's walking, right? And I stop her. And I'm just like, excuse me. Doesn't hear me, right? I have to say, excuse me again. That was so freaking awkward. Because she has headphones on. I basically just got Ed, right? So I I say, excuse me again. And she hears me this time. She looks at me a bit startled. And I literally say, sorry for stopping you. I thought you were pretty. I was wondering if I could get your Snapchat. And I was 17, so I wanted Snapchat, right? Just did. And then she, she laughed. She laughed a bit, and then she said, yeah. And then she said, yeah. I, I don't know why she said, yeah. I mean, whatever. But she said, yes, basically. And at the time, I had absolutely nothing going for me. Bit different now. It's getting there. It's getting there, boys and girls. But at the time, I didn't really have much going for me at all. But she said, yeah. So I was gassed. I was very happy. And I gave her my phone. And she started typing it in. And then as she was typing it in, I asked her, I asked her, how old are you, by the way? She was 23. And I was like 16, 7. I was 17 at the time, I'm pretty sure. Just turned 17. So <laughs> I told her I was 17. And then uh, very quickly, she untyped it. But that's about as far as it went. And then I was like, all right, have a nice day. And I walked off and... You know what? I was so goddamn happy. I was very, I felt very accomplished with myself. I was very happy that I did that because I know a lot of guys can't do that. And me knowing that I had the balls to do that, it just put me in a great mood. Like it felt like I had just taken something. I felt like I just gotten high. It felt just like one time I've had laughing gas for like, for like a medical reason. I had like an operation on my hand. Um, long story. I'll tell you guys later. But anyway. And it felt like that. It felt like laughing gas. That's I was that ecstatic. Right? But how did I build up to that point? Well, before I had even done that, there was actually a lot of work put in the foundations. Because I wasn't even able to talk to the girls at my school. Right? Even if my friends were with them. Right? I didn't have the balls for that. So how, how did you go from... How have I gone from not being able to talk to basically anyone apart from guys that I know to now cold approaching is basically what I have to do 
to film my main channel videos. I have to stop people on the street and stick a microphone in their face. That's what I have to do now. Like, I've made, like, a, a bit of a career now out of doing that. So if I've managed to go on from not being able to talk to anyone, basically, to doing that, it's definitely a skill that you can learn. It's not something that you were just born with. It's not something that just the, the popular kids have, you know what I'm saying? And it's just them. It's definitely something that you can get better at. And I have put a lot of effort myself into getting better at it. The first thing you have to do is you have to kind of assess where your level is right now. Because you may think you're like ultra confident or whatever. Or maybe you don't, right? But the easiest way is to see what your level is at. Let me ask you a question. Have you cold approached a girl before and asked for her number, right? If you have, or her Instagram. If you have, fair play. You've already got a decent level of confidence. You've, you're already fairly comfortable with social skills. So you've already done a lot of the work. If you've done that, you've already done a lot of the work. I'm talking about like a completely random girl that you've just seen walking about. You have no idea who she is and you're out in public. Like if you've done, if you cold approached a girl like that, then fair play. But I'd argue that the majority of people have not. The majority of guys have not done that. Now, how do we build up to that? The way that I started was basically by just saying hello to people, like on the street. That's honestly the first thing I did. And in addition to that, I also visualized the situations. I visualized the situations that I saw myself in, that I visualized the situations that I wanted to be in, I wanted to excel in, I, I saw how I had to act in those. I asked myself, how would really confident guys act? Because I would think of the guys at my school, at least, who were quite confident. And I was like, well, how would they act in this situation? Turns out now, they, aren't, they weren't actually that confident. I just had this image that they were confident. So I used that image. And I thought, what would they do in this situation? <coughs> and I basically imitated that. I imitated that. But you quickly encounter the friction that trying to imitate someone who is a lot more confident than you. And there's a lot more outgoing. There's like a, there's like a, there's a bit of a barrier. There's a bit of friction in between. Like, y you know what you need to do, but you just can't quite do it when it comes to actually biting the bullet. And how do you get better at biting the bullet, basically? Because a lot of the time, right, especially now that you're becoming more aware, maybe you weren't aware of this social, social skills kind of thing before, right? And cold approaching and this kind of thing. Maybe you weren't aware of it, but maybe you already were aware of it. And you kind of know when you should go approach somebody, right? Like you want to, you know, when you want to go talk to a girl, for example, that you, that you just see out in public, but most of the time you won't. So how do we get over that fear? That's something that is so ingrained in our DNA. It's almost like a survival mechanism. It's, yeah, it's kind of like fight or flight nearly. I mean, you don't fight, but like fight would be to go over and talk to them and flight was just to be run away and well not run, but you wouldn't approach them, right? <coughs> so how do we get over that response? Well, for me, what I've done is basically weighing up the pros and the cons of that approach in my head and trying to be logical about the situation, trying to be logical in my head that, you know what, I haven't really got much to lose. The the things you have to understand is that there's not actually that much to lose at all. Like, there's hardly any downside to this. And you could meet someone new who could really who could really benefit your life, you know? I've actually got, like, a Skillshare course, like, a bit more in detail on this. Um, if you look in the description. So, I'll leave it there if you want to go check it out. There's a one-month free trial as well if you want that. But anyway, <coughs> getting over that fear... Weighing up the pros and cons, assessing the situation. I mean, usually the worst thing that will happen is maybe the interaction goes doesn't go that well, and they think you're a weirdo, and the people around you think you're a bit weird. That's about it. It doesn't really go further than that. So, why are you being a bitch? Just go. You know what I'm saying? You just 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 go. Like, there's no reason why you shouldn't at that point. I mean, yeah. By then, there's literally nothing holding you back. Like, there's literally nothing holding you back. There's only friction in yourself. It's only the, it's only the um, constricting thoughts that you put on yourself that are going to not allow you to do that. Such as, oh, she would never say yes anyway. Or they're going to think I'm a weirdo anyway. Or I'm just going to get rejected. 
or like you'll say some BS like, oh, the train's coming in like three minutes. I'm like, well, you, you'll give yourself <coughs> some excuse like that to not do it. Just to basically tap out. Just submitting defeat, basically, right? That's your little dinosaur brain trying to get out of a hard choice. But this difficult choice is going to benefit your life. So at the end of the day, what I think you should do is try to figure out the level you're at right now. Are you good at talking to... Are you good at just saying hello to people on the street? If you're not, that's what you have to try and start doing, right? That's what you have to try to start doing, okay? Are you comfortable with starting a conversation? Just not even if it's about something relevant. Let's say you don't even need directions. You can still ask for directions, right? That will just build up your social tolerance. It's like everything else. You have to progressively overload your social skills. You have to progressively get better at cold approaching, right? It's just, it is just a matter of practice. I know that's not really the sexy advice you want to hear, but that is really what it's about, okay? And if you haven't, you kind of have to put yourself out there. Like, you're going to go out, and there are going to be situations where you can clearly do it, and you will pussy out. Like, 99% of you will pussy out. You'll remember this video. you remember these thoughts, and you won't do it. But you know who will do it? The guys who are going to get ahead of you will do it. There aren't many who will, but the guys who want to get ahead will do it. They will steal your girl. They will go ask. They will level up faster than you. And you'll sit there crying about it. And you'll say the world's unfair. So, your choice, bro. Your choice. At the end of the day, you can make the choice. You can go out right now if you wanted to, right? Let's say it's like midday or something, right? You could easily go out right now and you could go to the shopping mall and you could see some girls. You could see a girl or you could see anyone and go, go up and talk to them about anything. Compliment them. If there's something you genuinely find interesting about them, maybe it's something they're wearing or, you know, maybe it's their watch, whatever. You could easily strike up a conversation about that and then you just go off that. What are you doing here today? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. <clears throat> There's no excuse. You could just go do it, right? This, I, li I literally went out a couple of times just to cold approach. Like, I'd go out with friends with the main mission there to cold approach some girls. And that's how I got better at it. And that's how I've got an entire channel based on cold approaching and interviewing random people. Like, I have a rough... I do know what I'm talking about in this field because I have leveled it up a lot. And it's taken a lot of practice and a lot of rejections. And we're here now. If you guys want to know more about this... I'm offering coaching one-on-one -on -one about social skills so I can talk about your own problems with me in the description. And there is a pre-sale available of my full social skills guide for self-improvement. The ultimate social skills guide for self-improvement. It's going to be the definitive guide of self-improvement. The definitive guide, sorry, of social skills in self-improvement. So you can pre-order it now and you'll get it at you'll get it at for $97. And then when I sell it, I'm gonna sell it at $197, right? So if you wanna have a little look at that, I've got everything in detail in the description. But I hope you guys have enjoyed today's video and I will see you in the next one. Peace.